In this video, we're going to uh, construct the moment axial force interaction diagram and include the effects of the phi factors. Um, so this video is a continuation of a previous problem in which we found uh, several points. Uh, so we found the pure compression point, the balance point, the tension controlled limit, pure flexure point, and pure tension point. Um, so, in, and these were all for our rectangular section uh, with a height of 25 inches and a uh, width of 15 inches. Um, it's a symmetrical column as well. Uh, so if you haven't uh, watched that video of how to, to come up with our moment uh, and uh, moment axial points for these points, then uh, you can go back and, and review that. Um, so now we can apply our fee factor. Um, so we'll apply a different fee factor based on uh, what point we're at. And remember our fee factor is based on what strain we have in our tension steel. So at pure compression, our strain is less than yield um, and less than our tension control limit, so we'll have a fee of 0.65. At our balance point, where uh, we have a strain less than our tension control limit, so we're still at 0.65. Our uh, tension control point is, we set that um, to be so that uh, we have a strain in the tension steel of 0 0.005. So we'll, that's when we'll have a fee of 0.9. And then in all these uh, later points, our, our strain is only going to get larger, so we're still going to have a fee of, of 0.9. When we're applying our fee factor, we take our fee times both our MN and PN. Uh, so here you can see what I'm taking phi times pn and phi times uh, mn to get these uh, last two columns. Um, so you can see that on our uh, compression side we're shifting um, our diagram by 0.65 so you see a larger difference between our factored and unfactored diagrams and then on the tension side uh, we have less of a, a change because we're only shifting by a phi of uh, 0.9 here. You can see that uh, you, the diagram will get a little nose on it. Um, so we call this a, a bottlenose dolphin. ACI also has a minimum eccentricity limit, uh, which accounts for the fact that you'll, it's very difficult to apply a load right at the uh, plastic centroid or right on the plastic neutral axis. Um, so it accounts for there always being some kind of moment in the beam. Uh, so the, the minimum eccentricity limit for uh, tied columns uh, or rectangular columns uh, is shown here. So for our column, we'll have uh, 0.8 times our fee factor, 0.65 for compression controlled, times 0.85 times 4 KSI times uh, our gross area, which is 15 inches times 25 inches minus 8 square inches and then all of this plus 8 square inches times 60 KSI um, and this will give us our minimum eccentricity limit phi pn uh, equal to 898 kips. Uh, so when we apply this to our moment axial load interaction diagram, you can see this acts as an upper bound. So our actual um, capacity envelope, I'll highlight in red. So we have our upper limit, and then we're on our factored curve. Uh, so in our compression controlled region, uh, this transitions between compression and tension controlled, and then um, we're in the tension side where we're tension controlled. So now if we had our actual uh, load combinations, we can come here and we can see where those load combinations fall in our, in our plot. So as long as all of our uh, factored loads fall within our uh, factored moment axial load interaction diagram, then our design is okay. If we had any points that would fall outside of this factored diagram, then our column would be no good, and uh, we'd have to uh, either increase the size of the column or increase the amount of steel.